about the expected effect of rising global temperatures in Australia. But here to talk about the likely impact on the world's most vulnerable people is Dr. Simon Bradshaw, who's the climate change advisor to Oxfam. Welcome, Simon Bradshaw. Yeah. Just run us through the elements in this report that have alarmed you the sure. most. This is the most comprehensive assessment of the impacts of climate change today. It's a very authoritative report compiled by hundreds of scientists. It's the impacts on food production that concern us particularly, and the fact that these impacts are very disproportionately shared. It's invariably the countries with the least responsibility for climate change that are set to fare worse under the changes that we're set to see. Mm. Have you noticed already that climate change is being felt in those mm. poorest countries? And this is affirmed in the report as well, which is much stronger than the previous assessment in terms of looking at actual observed changes. It talks about significant declines in wheat and corn crops in particular. But it's also confirming what the communities we work with in the Pacific, in Southeast Asia, around the world, have been telling us for some time where they're you know, emphatic about the fact that seasons are changing, this is affecting their ability to grow food. This certainly mm. seems to be the, the darkest report produced by the uh, UN on climate change. Will it make a difference, though? I would hope so. And look, it is very uh, alarming in its impact, but it also stresses that adaptation is taking place in various areas. The communities that we work with are working uh, very hard with a lot of ingenuity, often with very few resources, to adapt to the impacts that can't be avoided. It's certainly clear that Australia needs to not only reduce its own emissions, but scale up that support to vulnerable communities, especially in our region. It's really a case of risk management, is one of the core messages in the report. Changes are happening, more changes have to be expected. We can reduce those risks considerably if we act mm. harder and faster. Climate change sceptics, though, would describe it as simply scaremongering. How would you answer that? Well, there aren't many of them. They do tend to be very vocal. Mm. I think we have to stress that this is a huge undertaking, producing this report. It's signed off by 196 governments, including Australia. It's rigorously researched. It distills a massive amount of information. Now, the sheer complexity of the issue, of course, means that there will be ways in which people can poke holes in it and find reasons for not acting. Uh, but really, there's nothing in there that can give us any cause for complacency. And what is the public appetite uh, now in Australia for taking action against climate change? I think it's certainly growing. We saw some very large uh, rallies last year of people calling for a stronger response. There's some polling that shows that uh, particularly the impacts on agricultural here and crop losses are of concern to people. I think the more Australians understand both the impacts in the region, but also the scale of action taking place, including in the big economies, the US and China, the more appetite there is for us to really get our house in order here. But do you think politicians will take more notice of, of this report than others, briefly? We'll be doing everything we can to encourage them to do so. The Independent Climate Change Authority um, gave its advice to the government a couple of weeks back, suggested substantially uh, increasing our emissions targets. Australia is going to come under a lot more pressure from other countries around the world to increase its ambition. And it's strongly in our own national interest. The report shows that we have particular vulnerabilities here in Australia, particularly for our agriculture and other industries. We have a strong interest in a strong global response, and the best way for us to do that is to, to aim higher ourselves. Dr Simon Bradshaw, thank you. Thank you. It's the turn of another former Premier of New South Wales.